Thank you. So we regularly hear the invite of Rome not to be particularly nice, but provocative. Uh, this time, uh, that might be a diff little different. No. No. <laughs> Listen, you got here a beautiful illustration why Israelis and Palestinians will never live in peace, never in our lifetime. Everything we have, they claim it is theirs. The birds were singing for me. <laughs> okay, I mean, there were different how birds. dare you, how dare you? Okay, acquire, occupy, steal, my birds. They were different birds. No, no, they were the same. They were ultra-orthodox birds, okay? Uh, listen, listening to Seri is something, I mean, through all the pain and, 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 and the accurate sadness, it's a very optimistic listening and reading, and uh, uh, um, thank God we don't have more of you, okay? Because otherwise we would have had peace and we don't know what to do with it, okay? <laughs> so uh, how many of you have been to Jerusalem? Mm, my sympathy. My sympathy. Um, uh, um, I'm as reluctant as Seri vis-a-vis this city. I mean, sometimes the magnet doesn't work. Sometimes it attracts me in fo with forces I cannot resist, and sometimes it resists me with forces I cannot resist. So, for example, every day I have to drive into Jerusalem. He drives from one place, I drive from another place. So the first four kilometers into the city is a cemetery. Just to remind me how positive the city welcomes me. Then you finish the cemetery uphill climbing, you have the Lubavitcher Rebbe waving to you, which is a kind of a Jewish version of the Never Die Messiah, okay, or Never Die Rebbe. Okay, when you finish all of this, you are actually bumped into herds of ultra-Orthodox walking in and out and in and out and in and out, and then you're into the city and you do whatever you have to do. And though it is a daily experience walking through the, uh, driving or walking through this friction, for me it was actually almost from the first moment vis-a-vis -vis the 67 watershed. Up until 67, I'll come to that in a second, was a kind of a childhood, very protected, very like us people. Unsere Leuten, no problem, nobody is different, everybody is the same. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, the opening, the total openness of so many gates, nobody dared to open before, and all of a sudden I have to encounter him. So 67 is a, water, is a watershed. What happened to me in 67? I'll give you two very little illustrations. Uh, uh, 6th of, six of June, so they, it was Monday, Tuesday was 7th, the 8th, Jerusalem was totally liberated or occupied, depends on the point of view. And this was Wednesday. I think the next Saturday was the holiday of Shavuot, in which everybody was dancing down to the Kotel, to the Wailing Wall. They erased the whole Mugrabi neighborhood, made it a huge, impossible uh, 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 courtyard, football, whatever. It was huge. I mean, from a narrow alley, or from the pictures, it became something very huge. I was a little boy of 12 years old, and everybody in the, in the heat of the summer was dancing down to the quarter in a kind of a monoton, mo monotonic dance, da 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 For hours we were dancing, and after something like four, five, or six hours, we are back to the place in which we started the whole thing. And I said, where was the Kotel? And they said, didn't you see it down there? And I said, oops, I didn't see it. So the first time I was officially going to the Kotel, he was not at home. I didn't see him. And ever since I have this kind of bizarre relations with a place I don't really want to be there. So that was the first time, it was Saturday. I will say, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, a week or so after the war, I had my first Kodak camera, and I was walking down the old city. It was maybe a week or two weeks after the war, and right out of the Austrian hospice, at the, via, at, the, uh, 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 at the road which leads to the Damascus Gate and to the Via Dolorosa, there was a coffee. We're sitting three Arab gentlemen on a small straw uh, 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 chair, stores, whatever you call them, you know, the little ones. And one of them was huge with a fantastic, impressive backside, spilling all over this little, this little chair. 
And they were sitting there and drinking uh, Arabic coffee, and I'm a little boy with my camera, tries to, to do the, this, and all of a sudden, one of them is, turns to me, the fat guy, turns to me, and in the fluent Hebrew, because then there were still people who spoke Hebrew over prior to 48, to, uh, prior to 48 uh, separation of the city, and said, little boy, what do you think, that I'm a holy place that you take a picture of me? Oops, oops. Okay, he was crossing this way and I was crossing the other way and both the Kotel and this backside of the holy place or the holy man was the first encounters I had with the reality I never faced before, which was, uh, 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 which was never easy one ever since actually was never easy one. And when Hanno called and said, uh, I'd like you to come with Seri, and which is always, really always a pleasure. I mean, it's, it's beyond joy. Uh, um, and he said, come and talk about your Jerusalem. That was actually the invitation. The first thing that jumped into my mind, it's not because it's Solomon, uh, Solomon Zulzer's place, was, a mel was melodies. Because Yerushalayim Sheli is a kind of a song, a poet, written by Dan Almagor about various individual Jerusalemite characters, the Palestinian, the religious clergy, clergy etc., etc. And, and I thought about this evening through terms of of melodies, so to say, and actually how melodies of Jerusalem were changed during the years. When I was a little boy, uh, the songs about Jerusalem were very sad, full of longing and sadness and exilic, almost despair. I mean, like my mother, who had operaic voice, used to sing about and you hear 2,000 years of longing and when we did the blessing the blessing of the food after the Maltzeit, okay, the classical uh, Maltzeit at home, we did the blessing of the food, so it came God have mercy on Jerusalem, your city so it was never the wordings it was always the melody of Rachem no Adoy no Eloheinu it's so sad. You want to cry, just finish a good meal, and all of a sudden, oh, the sadness of the generation comes to kill your appetite. <laughs> and then, and then, and then came 67, and all of a sudden, this diasporic sadness melodies were transformed into very, very impressive marches. Here is a one. I will fit, we're standing at your gates, Jerusalem, and now listen very carefully, and our guns and hovitzers were singing to you psalms, songs of psalms. The guns and hovitzers are citing psalms. I'm sorry, Mr. Sulzer, okay? I mean, I'm not into this category, but nonetheless, and I can go on and on with it, how the melodies and the kind of songs actually reflects a different attitude to the place, from softness and longing into something much more, I would say, militaristic, very presented, walking with my boots on, mm, it's mine. It's mine now. We were three. My late sister, my beloved sister and myself, and from all the three of us, which is a family of now 50 or 60 offsprings, only my sister's children are living in Jerusalem. All of us left the city. The city I knew is not there anymore. The city I knew exiled from itself. People left to Tel Aviv, people left to the occupied territories, wherever they are. Jerusalem, socially speaking, is a different place. And I will illustrate it later on in, in, in a different way. And I believe that the three stages that happen to the concept of Jerusalem in the eyes of the Israelis are a reflection to the three stages of the Israeli revolution in general. 
And bear with me with this little intellectual journey. Here is a word of warning. Gerhard Scholem, the famous uh, 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 historian of, 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 uh, of the Kabbalah and the, Jewish, and the Jewish studies, wrote in the late 20s, he wrote a very interesting article which is a vow of loyalty to our language, in which he says, God will not remain muted or will not remain silent in the language in which we made him take a vow thousands of times to return to our life. The words that we address Jerusalem are loaded words and step by step, decade by decade, generation by generation, deeper and deeper and deeper divine, messianic, eschatological layers of these loaded words are being exposed and God is not silent anymore in Jerusalem. I will say that Jerusalem of our childhood was a holy place, but God was absent from the scene, both the Christian and the Muslim and the Jewish. God is crossing the streets nowadays, God and Allah and Elohim, and they collide into each other. And one is saying, I'm the one, and the other one is saying, I'm the one, and the third one is saying, I'm the one, and she's saying, I'm, I'm the one. And each and every one of those do not feel it is possible to make room for other ones. So this city is a different city in many cases. When we fir first aspire about Zion, Zionism, whatever it was at the time, even Zion in the Bible is not a very clear concept. It was a kind of a long distance longing. We want to go back to somewhere there. Is it the homeland? Is it the city? Is it the concept? We just want to go back. It was not an exact, accurate uh, uh, municipal planning. So Zionism for a long, long one was about a long, long time, even before Theodor Herzl was about longing, years and generations of longing. Then again came 67, and let's say that Zionism, unlike 48 and unlike 50, uh, 56, 67 is about Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, when we moved into Jerusalem, Zionism narrowed down to a city. Yes, we expanded it. And Jerusalem today spreads from Jericho to Natania. And when King Solomon first uh, designed the city planning of Jerusalem, he never had something like this in mind. It's a huge metropolitan when you look at it physically or urbanly speaking. But nonetheless, this united Jerusalem became the focus of the Israeli political, intellectual, and I would say religious and moral existence in many ways. You remember how Bibi Net Benjamin Netanyahu defeated Shimon Peres in 96 by saying, Peres will divide Jerusalem. Huh. And that was the end of it, because Jerusalem is the heart of the issues. And when you look today about the issue, it is not about the greater concept of Zion. It's not about the vicinity of Jerusalem. It's about a certain point of a half square kilometer in the center of Jerusalem, which is the Temple Mount. This is a narrow down of couple of, of 200 years from a long big dream into a place, into a site, and the incitement coming out of it. How does that reflect the other processes of Israel? And again, Israel from an Israeli point of view, not Israel or Palestine from a Palestinian point of view, which is the other side of the same moon. Jerusalem in many cases is the litmus paper of our existence. Israel now is at its third stage, or third chapter. The first chapter was 48 to 77. The state was established on the foundations of Zionism and whatever it was, and the concept was more or less, without going into details, a more or less secular, more or less socialist, hope to be full-scale democracy, and the central 
iconic piece of it was the concept of statehood, what Ben Gurion called Mamlachtiyut. So democratic to be improved, but very uh, the democracy at its cradle, but with a lot of potential, socialist, secular, with the concept of statehood at its center. This energy lasted what, for 29 years, from 48 to 77, and it was exhausted. It ran out of energy, and Begin took over. Menachem Begin's second chapter, a second Israeli revolution, replaced the socialist concept with a capitalist, neoconservative, liberal uh, uh, economic philosophy, replaced the concept of secularism, almost la hicite of the public domain, with traditionalism, deep, almost religiosity, replaced democracy as a concept which is sensitive and contains minority voices into the rule of the majority, and replace the mega replacement, statehood was replaced by landhood. Menachem Begin introduced the concept of the great land of Israel. That was the second chapter. More or less equivalent, give or take a couple of years, to the change from larger Zionism to United Jerusalem, and it lasted up until a couple of years ago. When you listen today very carefully, to Israeli narratives, Israeli political argumentation, you feel that the whole story of the greater land